Um lena blog gemara today's daf is daf lamad gimel. And we'll begin. We're up to the lama days on the base on the bottom of the page. We're discussing the whole concept. If Tsar Balachayim is from the Torah or only Midr Abbanon, and Rava declared openly that Tsar Balachayim is from the Torah. And we're trying to bring different proofs one way or another. Says the Gemara, Toshma, come in here. It says in Pasuk, we're going to be now, uh, we're going to uh, emphasize, accentuate every single word in the Pasuk where it talks about the animal is found lying on the ground. You see the donkey of your enemy, Ravit, you know, sprawled under its bundle. It's lying on the ground, and if you and don't refuse to uh, help out, you should help out. Says the Gemara, Ravit, it's lying on the ground. The late after, in other words, it happened to be by chance. But not if he does this often. If he does it often, you have no key of, of helping out, of you know, the, of unloading. If the animal is standing, even though it's heavy, the burden is heavy, but the animal is able to stand, you don't have that key to uh, unload. Tachas masoi under the load, but not if you have to help lift up the animal and load him up. We're talking about unloading and not loading. Now, of course, you have to load up as well. We learned in the tailing. What we already asked. Tachas masoi underneath its burden. Masoi shiyoch lamabai. Talking about a burden that he's able to bear. But if it knows if the owner loaded up too much, then you are not chayib to remove it. Now, obviously, this doesn't, it's difficult to understand. If you believe Tsar Balachayim is from the Torah, why should there be a difference, you know, how heavily the, the owner, you know, how many packages and bundles the owner placed on the donkey? First of all, if he does this every day or just once in a while, you still have to help the animal out. Umali Oymid, what's the animal standing or if it's lying on the ground? If it's in pain, it's in pain. The author of this is Rabbi that we learned in the Mishnah. He's the one who says that if it, you put too many bundles on it, you don't have to, just, uh, to remove it because he holds that Tzar Balachayim is not Matayda, only Midrabon. The Ahmadi says Tzar Balachayim is Midrabon. We're still continuing on the, on the whole thing, whether Tzar Balachayim is the rice or the Rabbon. And um, and we're saying over here that the animal consistently lies on the ground or the animal is um, standing. You don't have to help out. If Tzabal Chaim the rice, women have to help out. So we're saying that the author of this rice, Rabbi Yisrael who we told us in the mission already, he holds that Tzabal Chaim is only mid not Mahat And with the Rabbanan, certainly you don't have to help out. If You know, we penalize the owner. You you unload that animal, not us passerby. How can I make sense? It says, it says clearly here, it has to to be only if the if the owner placed bundles on the donkey that he could have carried. If you put too many bundles, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to help out. Who says that? Only Mr. because he doesn't believe in Tzab Al-Chaim Man Shem like Yisrael Ha'i Who said this word? Mr. Shema So therefore, you can't ask a question on Rabbi who believes that Tzab Al-Chaim is the Raisa because over here, it's Rabbi Yisrael Glili who says you. And if it's the Rabbanon, we're going to penalize the owner if he doesn't take care of his own animal. The owner can hire help if he needs help. Or me much to ask the question. How can you tell it's a glue? But there's another din in this price. We don't know what the glue's opinion is. What's that? But Tony Safer, it says in the Safer, it says we learned Tachas Masai that you have to help out to unload the lame of fire. We don't have to help out to load up. Now, how can that be? It's a passing the tater. You don't have to help out at all. You have to help out. Ella means pshita lame of fire. Of course, you have to help also to load up, but to load up, you can you can have a right to ask to get paid. Ela b'schan. Now, Mashlam like this high swatter. Who's the one to do the idea that when, as far as unloading, not like Rabbi Shimon who says you never charge. As far as unloading, they say you cannot charge, but as far as loading, you could charge. So we say. I remember we had the machlekes of Shem. I told you yesterday. The Rosh says that that's all talking about. If a guy is, is not uh, is not uh, doing anything, so therefore he cannot charge. But if he's if he's working and he has to take off work, to help out, he has a right to charge. It's really a guli. No question. In this in this particular aspect, he holds Come on, our rabbanu learned. He see the it says in the post, like if you see the chamor so in achla, if you see the chamor of your donkey and so on and so forth, he see the sounds like even far away. Yochel, I feel merachek, even far away. Tamaleme, we have another passage where it says ki sivga. 
It says <clears throat> if you if you found uh, an aveda, a shayra chamoy, and you can't, you counted it, you should return it. It's kisivga. So sivga sounds like you have to mamish be standing there. And that's talking about Hashavah Saveda, yet the Gemara equates Hashavah Saveda and, and helping to in and prika. Sounds like the, 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 the theme is the same. Like you have to uh, help out another Yid when they're in Tzad. You have to mamish be the Tamil from a distance. We have something very similar in Megillah, beginning of Megillah about, you know, if you need uh, to it has to be neither or close. You know, which one is it? But here we have two psukim. One says it has to be able to be seen, which means it can be from a distance. And one says you have to mamish be there. Shira chachamim. Chachamim calculated echad misheva o machzer mil. A seven and a half of a mil, which is, let's say, roughly about 250 um, amas. A mil is 2,000 amas. Roughly about 250 amas distance. If you're within 250 amas, you have to go and help out the the, the situation. Zehu ris, and that's what we call the ris. So according to Rus, Tony, we learned umodu the ima parsa. After you help out the animal, you have to walk with him up to a parsa. We're talking about where the animal still looks a little bit shaky. If everything now is good, you don't have to. But if everything and the animal does looks a little bit insecure, you have to follow up to a parsa for meal, which takes seventy two minutes to walk. So you got to spend another two and a half hours because you're going to walk that direction and then come back to see. Uh, here you're allowed to get paid. Here you're allowed to get paid already for what you're doing this thing here. Because there's nothing happening right now. You're just taking a precaution. Okay. So now we are up to the last Mishnah in Elam Etzias, talking about lost objects. So we're talking about whose object do you have to retrieve first? So you have Ave Dosa. You lost an object. Ave Dosa. And your father lost an object. Whose? Though you would think because Kivod Ave you should uh, go ahead and give your father's object back because you have a mitzvah, two things. You have a mitzvah of Hashavah Saveda, you have a mitzvah of Kivod of Eim Gevaldik. Avedosah Kedemis, your Aveda comes first. And how do I know that? Because we had a few days ago, Efes that you shouldn't lose anything out. So therefore we say that, you know, you shouldn't come as a loss. You should go ahead and get your own Aveda. Yeah. <clears throat> what about Avedosah of Avedos Rabbi, your Rebbe? Why is that a factable Susi? Shalai Kaidim. You always take precedence. What about Avedas Aviv Avedas Rabbi? You have two Avedas in your father and your Rebbe. Sharabai Kedemis, take care of your Rebbe first. We'll have in the Gemara an argument. What's the definition of your teacher? What is the definition of your teacher? Does it mean that taught you everything, taught you a, a, a certain amount of things, or even taught you one thing? Sha'aviv Aviv has your father brought you into this world. But your Rebbe who taught you wisdom will bring you to the world to come. But the Im Aviv Chacham shall Aviv Kedemis. If your father is a Chacham, then your father comes first because there's a mile in your father and your Rebbe. Now the Reef's version is if your father is a Chacham equal to your Rebbe. That means if your father is a Chacham and not equal to your Rebbe, then this doesn't apply. But our version of the mission is if your father is a Chacham. And according to the Reef's version, if your father's equal, then they, some want to say there's no, there's no argument. The Reef is talking about if your father's a Chacham equal to the Rav, then even if he did not teach you anything, you give your father first. But in, in our mission, is talking about if your father Chacham, and he, even though he's inferior to the Rav, but if he also taught you, then he's then he's like your Rav and your father. They're both carrying away a bundle. You put down your, your teachers and then you put down your fathers. And the same thing as before. And here the, the mission doesn't mention if your father is equal. So most say it still applies here as well. But here you see clearly that there's a mitzvah of te'ina and prika when it comes to a person as well. What's the union here? So they're carrying a bundle. Why do you have to help them at all? There's the union of, of prika even by a person, not just by an animal who's you know can't carry the weight, but even by a person is also we already had before. The, the other others who argue and they say more. This is not the union of tina prika. This is more the union of avos yisrael. They're in pain, and all based on that story we had, Rabbi Shmuel. How you, okay, Tesis has an interesting conundrum. What happens? You have the three avedas: your aveda, the aveda of your of your uh, rebbe. Right, so between you and your Abayi Rebbe, you gotta go uh, first. But the covet of your father, and we had, you know, your father asked him to do something for him. We asked 
we learned in Kedushin, there's a machlekes, if you have to do something with your father, whose money should you use? But if Mishal Ben, that means that your kibbutz of aim includes a loss on your part, because it's your money. So, who gets first here? If you're going to say, my Aveda comes first, but the covet of your father comes before your Aveda. Because even though you're going to cause, you're going to, you're going to have a loss, if you hold Michelle Ben, even there's a loss, you got to listen to your father. But then if you have to listen to your father, we said, Aveda's Rabbi, and your father, your Rebbe comes first. But um, but uh, if your Rebbe comes first, then I come first. Because Aveda does so, Aveda's Rabbi, so it's, a, it's like going back and forth. What happens in this case? <clears throat> and and why Aveda's Rabbi? Because we said before, Ani Hashem, that you have to, you know, uh, do the right thing. Your father also will have a mitzvah to give it to your Rebbe. So Tejik includes, interesting here, that your Aveda comes first. Why? Um. If your father has Hana, well, when do we say that you have to spend money on it? If your father has Hana from that money that you lose it, you have to buy things for your father for your own money. So this loss that I'm having directly is, is adding to the covenant of my father. But over here, my loss, losing the animal, doesn't in any way help my father's covenant. My father wants a coffee. Now, or something like that, or whatever he wants me to do. So where the, where the, the, the loss is not directly benefiting my father, then you're not mechuyiv to have a loss. Okay, back to the mission. How you aviv with Rabbi Beis Hashemi? They're both in the king captive. Played as Rabbi by Beis Avi. You first your Rebbe, then your father. But the imba v'chacham played as Avi by Beis Rabbi. Then you do your father, then your Rebbe. But the middle case doesn't say, and that's what bothers everybody. Manushach is the first clause in the Mishnah that a father, uh, if he's a tamu chacham equal to your Rebbe, then applies to whole Mishnah. Then why doesn't apply to case number three? Why, when it comes to captive, suddenly you bring it up again? And that and in the middle case, that um, if it had to be unloaded and loaded, you don't mention at all about the father being you. What does that mean? They try to understand. Something about it. Sorry? 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 Um, I don't remember. I don't remember. I mean, how do you know Taki that you come first? Because it sounds like you shouldn't be first. We don't want you himself to come before. Now look at what it says here. So how can you call out? You come first. Anybody is very, very machmir in making sure that he comes first and everything. And so Taka will become poor. And Rashi says, if he uses this excuse, interesting Rashi here. Even though Minhadin, you talk, you can keep it. Sometimes you have to go Mishur Sadin and don't be so particular Shali Kaidim. Unless, says Rashi, it's a Hefsid Mechiach. No, it's a very pronounced Hefsid. And then Rashi, I'll just quote you Rashi. The Imtomid Medakti. If this guy is always particular and poetic, my all of oil, I don't have to help anybody out because I always come first. I don't give duck because I got to take care of myself first. He himself will need other people to help. He'll learn his lesson and see how other people are so nice and kind and think about others. I heard a beautiful word yesterday. <coughs> Said that, that Purim, Yom Kippur is just like the Zoya. Says that Yom Kippur is that Yom Kippur is just like Purim. That put it in uranium kippers. Siddhas talks a lot about it. Why is it Because they both are very similar. They both have a girdle. They have two animals. They have a common, and so on. Um, so I heard a word yesterday. <clears throat> said that by him kippers, it's all about me. I need to do chuba. I want to make sure I have a good year. And I say, like put him all the mitzvahs about your neighbor. Matanos of yanim Therefore, you put him as great than him kippers. You have to think about others. And that's what it says here. If you constantly cover kai ba'atzmai, say both say both they can be very machmir and take care of yourself. Not a good thing. Second one further. Oh yeah, all the the rabbi nice and masoy. They're both carrying away. Talk about rabbi shamru. What's a what's the definition of rabbi? <clears throat> Three opinions. <clears throat> rabbi shalom the chachma, but lay rabbi shalom the mikra mishnah. The one who taught you chumash and mishnah is inadequate because that's not sufficient. It's the one who taught you gemara. Taught you how to understand the Mishnah, how to understand everything else. Put the Gemara. That's the only one we can call you your rabbi. Um, Rabbi Yudha says, Doesn't matter what he taught you. Let's say all you know is Chumash. All you know is Nevi'im. But if that's what, uh, if that's what you want to call it, 
that's what you know. That's a, if he taught you whatever you know, whatever knowledge you have, he taught you most of it. He's your rabbi. Move it. And Rabbi Yisi Amir, Afilu lohei it ain't of El with Mishnah Achazel Rabbi. One Mishnah, one halachi taught you. He's already your rabbi. Like that, I'm pretty obvious. Even taught you how um, he's called my rabbi Alufa Miyadai. If if he taught you just one halach. A famous question. We don't have time to answer right now. We learn from Achi Teifu that Dover Mel learned from Achi Teifu and they called him my rabbi. And, and you know, say hello, but even halacha achas or so forth. Yet that story of Dov and Achat Teifel, he told him two things. So how do you learn from there even one thing? Famous question for another occasion. Says the Gemara, "Oh my Rabbi, says there were Rabbi. Oh my Rabbi, says Rabbi, can you get Rabbi Shchida? I follow this third opinion, like Rabbi Shchida. The Asman he explained to me a Mishnah where it says there's this kind of a of a, of a utensil that Zoya Malister and takes away the scum. Let's say on top of the soup or something. It's um, it's um." Something that has like a, a sieve at the end that you, it, it helps you draw out all the the, 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 the the scum on top. But also, there's a fork on the other side that you can use it as well as a fork. That's how some learn. Actually, a little bit differently. He taught me what it was. I didn't know what it was. So I called him my lab. Taught me one thing. All he did was, hey, it ain't of. No, that doesn't even teach me halacha. He taught me a taich that I didn't know. A pshat. Open my eyes. Shmuel caught a man. Shmuel did clear. Allah, whom Rabbanan, this rob, the Asbur explained to him. It says in the Mishnah, Echad Yehudid La Masa Shechi. One guy goes down. The Echad put has two keys. The Echad per se, keep one open the window, one open the. He has to put his hand in all the way, all the way up to his shoulder to get to the door because you have to put it through the hole and get around the door from the inside to open it up near in the in the base of Migdash. And the other one, he just opens. I didn't know what he was talking about. He showed me a diagram. And he called and he drew, he talked clear like, as if it was his lab. We'll get back to that in a minute. In Babel, in Babel, they all stand up for each other. And why? Because when, because since they learn Chavrusas, it, it's inevitable that one guy, te- each one's teaching something to the other guy. You know, you, some Gemara, you figure it out, some Gemara, I figure it out, so we're all Rebbe's to each other. And if you teach only one thing, you're already a Rebbe. So they would stand up, I was covered. And the Kaidan says, and they were re- rice clear. The Rishonim really asked. It says, if any Tamachach, even not your Rebbe, if you see a Tamachach, you're there with Tamachach, you have to rise clear if you pass away. The Chilik is normal clear, you can sew back up. Here, like Rashi says, another Rishonim says, you, you're clear, you cannot sew back up. Number one. And of course, you have to stand up for any Tamachach. But any Tamachach, you have to stand only when he's within you for Amos. Over here, Kimlai Einov. Because it's like the Rabbi Muvit. But they hold like Rabbi, Rabbi Yesi that even teach you one thing, you're a Rabbi Muvit. <clears throat> what about Nezisro? Why that can bubble? So either in Nezisro they didn't learn Chavru Semel and Nezisro, but also because bubble they had Smicha. And the thing is that when you have to stand up is only if it's equal to you. But if he's much greater than you, you, you know, the guy who's greater doesn't have to stand up for the guy who's less. So since people had Smicha, Smicha means that you're, you confer upon you officially. You're a Tamachacham Muvik. That's Tamachacham. So then it was different. Sometimes you did stand up, you did stand up, depends who you were. But in Babo, no smicha, everyone was equal. Well, in Aveda, the Mok of the Chajan of the Rabbi Mubi, regarding Aveda, if where your father was, you don't give back, only to your Rabbi Mubi. So, <clears throat> like a what? And uh, what does Rabbi Mubi mean? We'll see in a minute. So, Yehuda says Rabbi Mubi means grave chach, masib imenu. Now, here's a, a very, very sad Gemara. Kaboy mene Ravchiz de Menahuna. Ravchiz de asked Abhuna a question. Talmud de Tzadok Lai Rabbi. What happens if you have a Talmud, but his Rebbe needs him? Yeah, for example, you have Abayi Rabbi Yasef. Abayi Rabbi Yasef's favorite Talmud. But yet, Abayi kept on reminding Rabbi Yasef of things that he said in the past, or Bryce's that he said. So Rabbi Yasef needed Abayi. So Ravchiz asked Abhuna. What about a student that the Rebbe needs him? Now, Rab, Rab, Rab Huna understood that Rab Chizda believes that Rab Huna needs him. He got so offended. I you know what happened. You're offended. Tabo Chacham. I'm like, Chizda, Chizda. I don't need you. You need me. Now, the reason why Rab Chizda said it is we'll have a Menachas of Zion, I think it is, where Avimai forgot the whole Menachas. Avimai was born Rab Chizda's Rebbe. So he took Rab Chizda, Rab Chizda, teach me Menachas. Remind me what's happening in Sakhon Nachas. So it happened. So Rav Chizda was not standing up to asking. That's a question like over there. What, happened, what do I do with Rav Vimei? But Rav Hunda understood he was asking about him. 
So look at it says Ada boy in Shnin ik pede hadadu. Forty years. Now there's two ways of learning shopping about here. I like better the first shop. Until they were forty years old, because we had in Rabbi Yisora that till forty years old you don't fully understand. Wow. So only when it's forty years old do they fully understand each other and so on and so forth. But the other shot simply forty years they didn't talk to each other. Well, I like Abi Adodi. Abhun was offended and Abchida felt embarrassed. Yosef Abchida Aboyin Tanisa. Abchida sat and fasted forty days. From the whole day to that Abhun could be upset him. And Yosef Abhun Aboyin Tanisa. He said forty fast. From the whole day to Abchida, he realized that he was wrong about Abchida, and he couldn't something. So why don't we just go and apologize to each other? <laughs> yeah, or whatever. He said, "Look, I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. I, I, I don't understand." I don't understand why they didn't go. We, we, we learned more brachas that that Chizki didn't, you know, they didn't, they didn't want uh, didn't want to go to a uh, to uh, to uh, to and Shai and Novi and Shai and Novi didn't want to go to Mechai. If it's so the Asian makes Chizki sick, so Shai had to go visit him. No, but there's an Indian to go out there like Moshe Rabbeinu went you know, and try, and try to talk to us about it. Why in the world didn't Rav Chizda or Rav want to go to each other and apologize? Or, so I don't know. But for me, you learn out that. Forty tenetim is what you do when you do an aveda. So in Shulon and Shabbos and a few other places, when if you did a certain aveda and you want to do tshuva, in fact, in Sim and Shulon Madal, Shulon Hey, Shulon Madal, the end where talks about made a fire, there's a fire on Shabbos. He tells you how to do tshuva. You know, if you did, if you did the wrong thing over there, you fast, you stuck, uh, fast Monday and Thursdays, and blah blah blah. Itmar and comes from it. Itmar is a very easy one. Rabbi Yechon halacha ke Rabbi Yehuda. The halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda. Who's the Rabbi moving? Shreif Chachmasim. The Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Sheish. The halacha is Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Sheish is the halacha of Rabbi Yehuda. Even if he taught you one, not even a halacha. Hey, it ain't of. He taught you one pshat. So I think when we so every Rebbe, surely the Talmud was a, you know over the years was a taught him something you know asked a good question which opened the eyes of the thing. Interesting, if you ask a question that opens your eyes, is that also considered Hayyadainov? Where Hayyadainov means that the Talmud also had to explain to the Rav what the Rav came on his own, but only because the Talmud asked the question, which is what happened. Tamid Yaz Makulam, because they asked the good questions and forced me to think, and oh, interesting. Yeah. But now we learn in our Mishnah, Rabbi Shalom the Chach, Mark, so the Chayyad Tzadak, you have to, you know, you have to learn any Chach. No. But many Those who learn only Chumash, it's good, but not good enough. Because you don't really know what's going on. If you learn Mishnah, you'll get some Schar, but still not good enough. Then we had more say to them, if you learn only Mishnah and you stop passing them, because you don't really fully understand it. Gemara. So we see clearly Gemara is called Gemara, not Talmud. Gemara. Ain't, in fact, the Rasha is before, on top of the page, Rasha says, the Nikra Gemara. Yeah. But who Nikra Gemara? Ain't Lachamid the Gedai Lamazu. Learning Gemara, there's nothing better than that. And the Bain Tam told us a Gedusha when it says, Shlish and Mikra, Shlish and Mishnah, Shlish and Talmud. She's yeah, been told says look at mother because God has everything in it. Okay, Bible, everything is bold in it. Well, I love having rocks for mission yesterday. What's going on here? Then he says, Learn Mishnah. And the Fidic Rabbi says, Shall the Mishnah is Bapa and know all the Mishnah. What's going on here? How good for Kasha? I'm going to go to the Mazu, best thing to look at mother. Then how do I be loyal? I'm going to be saying, Mother, Shall the Mishnah. I'm going to be a Hadechina said, This evolved wasn't said at the same time. A very interesting Rashi here sets the tone on top of the page. He tells us what happened. It's so long Rashi, I won't learn about how to just tell what he says. B'mei Rebbe Nishad Mishnazu. This Mishnah was learned in time of Rebbe. It started off and then it finished differently. First of all, what happened was that after the times of the hill, times were very difficult to so as Rashi explains, they didn't have the time and the cup and the zitch flesh to sit and learn properly, understand, tease everything out. And because, uh, you know, they were constantly worried about their, their, their lives, their lives were in jeopardy. So there were a lot of machlaits in between Tamidi Hill, Tamidi Shah Hill, Mishrabu Tamidi Shah Hill. Mishrabu and Shah had also machlaits in, but very few. It's a Talmidim because they couldn't, they weren't settled because the Shibit Malchu exists. Actually, the Ramah Moshe writes it's very similar to this. And then what happened was Rebbe was very fortunate that he became friends on Saninus. And in fact, we'll have in tastes of Avodah that maybe he was Megaya. And, um, and because he was very friendly, Antoninus allowed them to learn. 
So what he did was he invited all the, the, the Tanoim at that time. You know, you learned something, you remember it, let's go. Ahead. And they all sat there and they verified which who remembered accurately, who didn't remember accurately. And then he started putting it together in, in, into, into Inyonim. Very interesting what Rashi says. I'm going to quote you Rashi because I never saw the, anywhere else. Rashi says here, um, and when they all gathered together, he said, um, the Sid, I'm going to quote you Rashi, the Sidri Hamasechtis, they organized the Masechtis, Divre Nezikin Levadam, which we call Nezikin, the Divre Yevamas Levadam. Rashi calls what we call Noshim, Rashi calls it Yevamas. Why in the world would you call it Yevamas? Yevamas is one particular law. So many years ago, I gave a whole people of why Yavamas is the first Masechta in Seder Noshim, when in fact it should have been the last Masechta. You know, you were married, you had no children, and, all. and, uh, and that's why it's the whole, according to Rashi, the whole thing called Yavamas, but we don't have time right now. But you see clearly, Rashi calls that section, I haven't seen anybody else do that, called Yavamas. And then they've cut Shibu Interesting. Okay. In fact, he's just giving an example. So they, so what happened was, the Gemara continues, then Shafka Kuli al it was the Gemara. Everyone got excited. Everyone looked at Mothers, but they forgot the original. They started to forget the Mishnah. So how did Doris look? He said, hey, the Mishnah, you, the Gemara. you need to know the Mishnahis. You got to know the basics. And then we learn all these pulpul. But if you can learn pulpul without knowing the basics, there's a famous person called Rabbi Yaakov Polak. He was called the Avi HaPulpul. His student of Shalom Shachna, whose main student was the Ramah. So we're talking about here daily Israel. In fact, I'll just digress for one minute. The Ramah became a son-in-law of Rabbi Shalom Shachna. And his wife passed away very young. And it was a big, you can imagine, an unbelievable amount. Passed away very young himself, 36. But he was um, a big Leviah. And Amor made the most moving Hesped. And then uh, a few months later, that Amor asked if he could marry the second daughter of Shalom Shachter. And Shalom Shachter, no way. <laughs> and people couldn't understand. It's a drama. So he said, any husband who loses a wife can make such a beautiful Hesped he obviously prepared it when he was still alive. I don't want such a son in law. <laughs> now, Rabbi Yaakov Polak was Avi Pilpul, and yet we have no Svarim from him. He's quoted in a few places, but we have no Svarim from him. And, he, and what happened was they once, he was, he was such a genius, they once took a Masechah, they pulled out a few pages, and he was giving a share. He got to the bottom of the page, he got to the next page. He made a whole Pilpul to connect the two pieces together. And then afterwards, they showed him, that's initially, you know, the whole thing was above Mysa. He said, That's it. I'm not writing any Svarim. <clears throat> and um, so that's what happened. If you forget the Iker and you go straight in the world of Pilpul, you can get lost. That's why the whole Machlech is whether you're pro Pilpul, anti, you know, Maram Prague's brother was totally anti Pilpul, all these arguments, whether you're Pilpul, no Pilpul, it has to do with this. My daughter, what did Dashin, you know, what did the Rabbi Dashin, Kedorish, Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Loy, might receive, it says in Posik. <clears throat> In other words, why, why did he say go back to the Mishnah? Because he's very worried that they're going to forget the Mishnah. They're going to mix up the Chachamim. And for Halach, it's very important to know what, what was said by the Chachamim, what was said by the other Chachamim. And they, and they might, you know, instead of Chayim, they'll say Potter and all that kind of stuff. What Pasek did he dash? And it says in the Pasek this, Hagei La'ami, tell my people Pisham. Pisham are, are um, Avedas they did B'meizid. Tell them, notify them. Ula um, Beis Yaakov, Chatoisim. And tell Beis Yaakov they're the sins which I did b'shayig. So this is how we dash it. Hagei la'ami, tell my people. Now normally am is is the lower class people, but in ami, my people, these are close to me, these are tamil chami. Pisham, that they're avedas. I don't care what avedas do, I'm going to treat them like amazing. Because you should have learned better. Eilu tamil chami, shish gog, and amzik is doing this. You should have learned much nice. You know that lochem. To the rest of the people, chatosim, even the sins they do deliberately, I'm going to treat them like why? Because not their fault. Behind it, now we learned. If you don't even have a Zoyba Talmud, you should, he tells the Tamil Chamin, make sure you learn properly. It's no ignorance, is not an excuse. That's what Talmud Chachin. But for Lamarit, they have no idea we're going to treat even the Shaykh because they don't really know that, they don't realize that it's an Aveda. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, listen to me, you who have those who fear me. Uh, listen to, to these words. So be so I guess. These are And then it says in Pasuk further, your brothers will say, who are your brothers that they're going to say? 
uh, what do you call it? Elu Balimikra. These are people who learn only Chumash. So Nechim, your enemies? Okay, so the Balamikra <clears throat> are your brothers, but they're not so smart. But Sanechim, you know who your enemies are? Balamishna. Because you tell me to come walk around saying that the old people who know only Mishnah is a Mavle Eilam. They're destroying the world. So they hate you for saying that. Menadechim, <clears throat> uh, those that you put in the Chedim, Eilu Amorot, Amorot, Amoratim, they really hate you. We had a more Psach and Avram Tess. They were there that the Sham, what did Avram Kiva said, when I was an Amorot, if I ever saw Tam Chachim, I would rip them apart. Like a Shema Tema, ah, you're gonna say maybe Posak Sivar on the bottle sequim that they're gonna give up hope, they have nothing, one they don't have anything to do with Tami the Chamo, these people. Tamaloyma, the Nida, the Simchas, the Mashiach will come. We will all see in the Simcha. It doesn't say that I will see, it says we all, all the people we just mentioned, they will be happy. In other words, the, the worst Yid. Deep inside, really, uh, all world one, and therefore the needs of Chaschem Shema Tami Yisrael Yevayishu. That what? That the Eden um, would be embarrassed. What up? Tamalim Vehem Yevayishu. I will come Yevayishu. So he's good. Eden will be happy for the Tamil Chacham. Everyone will join in, and um, those who are goyim, they're the ones uh, uh, who will be uh, will be embarrassed when Mashiach comes. That Eden will do. But the Eden will all rejoice together when Mashiach comes. Every Eden will want Mashiach. Every will be happy, no matter which category they come into. Had Nalach Elam Etzias. Get back to the model. We had this about a pakot, and we actually had all of this in, in Baba Kama and so on. And it says like this: Oshay Mechinim is 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 uh, what it called is exonerated from paying anything except negligence. And the Oshay Mesachel and the Seicher, according to the Mechinim, um, is 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 chayiv the gneva vaveda lost or or stolen, but they're exempt from oynus. And and the Oshay is chayiv everything except if Mesa Mach and Locha died during its work. So what happens if it if, if the animal was stolen? That the Shem Mechinim has to swear. We had three shvuas Shloish Shalachti Bayad that didn't use it, and one of the shvuas and Beshusi is no longer in my house. What happens? He says, you know what? I'm gonna, I, you know, I, I can swear and get out of it. I'm gonna pay you. I'm gonna pay you. What happens then if the Ganif eventually is caught? Who receives the benefit of that cave for that double portion? So he said that if he paid and didn't want to swear, he now owns the animal, but, and therefore, if there's it's caught the Ganif, he receives the cave. Says the Gemara here, Hamafkrit, the Mishnah, Hamafkrit, the Chavay, the Behemoth Kalim, he stole by somebody, Behemoth Kalim. The model, we want to know why you have to give two examples. The Nigvo Shavdu was stolen or lost, she lame, and he says, You know what, I'll pay. The Lishava, and he didn't want to swear. Shari Omri Shemichir Nishba, the Yaiti, all he had to do was swear, and he would go, he'd be free. Nimsa Ganab, they ever catch the Ganab, Mishal and Tashlumi Kaful, he has to pay double, or Tava Hamach, if he went further, he shacked and sold Mishal Shabbat Bokhisha, but the Mim Mishal, who's he pay to? Let me shop a Who has it now? Which is the shaman? Tastes in the shaman. Everyone really know why does by avdu? There's no kaiful. There's no tavach So te, one of the pshatim is he said avdu was lost. Turned out to be that it was actually stolen. He didn't know. He thought it was lost. It turned out to be was stolen, and therefore there's kaiful involved. Okay. What about nishba? He swore and he got away free, and then they caught the ganav, who then gets the kaiful. Lord of Shalom didn't want to pay. Nimsa Ganif, Mishal is a Kaful, Tobak Mark Mishal is a Kaful, but who gets it? Mishal is about to come to the owner of the animal, which is part of the mission, is obvious. We'll see later. Let's think about it. Long live Mr. Behemoth, Mr. Kaful. Why talk about these two examples? Behemoth Kaful, see what he bought. Can he turn to Behemoth? Said Behemoth, having or said Behemoth, who the mock the lake failure, only by Behemoth, the owner of the animal is happy to say, What you, Shaman, you're very nice and you paid me, you know, up front. You know, you paid me because you said you'll pay me rather than swear. You can keep the kafel mission the nafish ticha. It's a big bother taking care of the animal, the yula la to bring the animal back and so on and so forth. So if you know what, I'm gonna give you the kafel. Um kaling. You took the kale and you put it away. Maybe I don't give why should you get the kafel? Okay, right now you pay, you'll get reimbursed if the kind of comes. But we turn the kale in the kale and come back to the kale. I'm giving the kale for the love of the kale. It's not that much, it's not that valuable. I'm not giving up that much. I'm a behemoth, the chitova, homocha, mishal, tashlumi, dal, the hey. That's just it's 500%, 400% profit. How often do you have a chance to make such big money? Aim on the maxillary. So, okay, you can have the the the, the kale, maybe even the kale, but I'm keeping the rest. You cannot make a transaction about something that didn't exist. What's going on? When did the shamer give when did the shamer receive the animal? Once the animal's gone, you couldn't receive the animal. 
Once it was stolen, how did the, how did the owner of the animal give it to the shaymet? Obviously, at the time when the shaymet took the animal to be a shaymet, it's as if the owner said, look, if it gets stolen, you're going to keep the kaifu. And you decide to give me the money, you can keep the kaifu, because that's when the transaction happened. But at that time, did you know it would be stolen? Did you uh, did you catch the gun? If, uh, how can you transact? He's giving, he's giving him the right to yeah, but how, it comes back. yeah, but it's not. He will we'll change his mind two seconds later. There's no king in it. He's very nice. He's a nice guy. You can have it. But then when they catch the gun, I changed my mind. So in other words, it had to happen during a transaction. The only real transaction happened at the time when the when the shaman took the animal. But as a double shaman, I them. I feel that I made them. I'm having to pay that. Could that be just say when is that said? Only by the fruits of a tree. You know, eventually, inevitably, eventually will come around. Actually, May never said that. It's a Huna who learned that in America. May actually said differently. Remembering the American Revolution, he said after I convert, after you convert, that's not like a pedis and a decal. Pedis and decal definitely will come. The season, you know, it'll grow. Who said you'll become a gate? Or after the who said you buy master will? But the Gemara you generally uses Rab Huna's shot. The Abel Hoch over here, me gave him the First of all, at the time when you gave him the shoyer to watch for you, did you know it gets stolen? And then teams like the Migdam, me gave him the Mishdaka Ghana, did you know the Ghana will be caught? The Mishdaka Ghana, me gave him the Misham. Not even even when it's caught, if the Ghana would have been Moida that he was stolen, and if we pass him like Rab, which many pass from holding pass like Rab, that Moida be Knas, the Achekar Bo Aidim, even if Aidim come afterwards and say, yeah, we know he was stolen, he is Potter. No, the only Moida be Mifter. So this is a mamish So even though the the the, the all the all the, um, the the what do you call it? the factors involved, all the variables are here. You know the animals here, the the, the shamers here, the owners here. But the event that hasn't happened. Yet. That's a davar shloim b'loylam. On my rov, so says, you know what? It all happened at the moment the shamer took it. Nasid becomes ka'ima as if he told him, as if the owner spelled it out. The owner is very happy to have a guarantee that he'll get reimbursed. So he's happy. That he, if, if he would have asked him, he would have said, you know what? If you want to give me the money instead of swearing and I, I walk away with nothing, I'm happy to take the principal and if there's a benefit, you can have the benefit. The stamp person would be happy for that security. So therefore, it's as if he said it. You should take the tilt of the Shalmani. If it was stolen and you're happy to go ahead and pay me, my part is yours for now. So it's an obvious question then. Why then if that if, if it's retrospective, then all the shearings, all the benefits that the animal had over that year until it was stolen should now go to the shamer because retrospectively, whose animal was it? The shamers. And what's wrong with that? The problem is there's a bryce that says clearly is a seven, he doesn't get the shearings. So get my mask or abzadi if so, I feel the gives us a live like this nami. It should also belong because it's retrospective. That means it turned out to be it was always his. So the owner now should have to pay, give him back all the shearings. Remember, a lot of time, why we learn that any offspring and any gift uh, that doesn't belong to him. Elon Abzeda, Abzeda says, Let's go one more line. As you can, it's retrospective, but not for the giza. Why not? Well, my post, why do you decide to have a person say, but not the shearings? Because a shvach that's extraneous to the animal, a ganif is caught and pays double, whatever, four or five times. I'm happy to part with it because I don't feel it's mine. Or the shvach the the, the animal's in self improvement, loy of it in the that you don't give away because it's my animal. We'll have a discussion more later. What happened to the value of the Animal goes up. Is that considered a shvacha de gufa or shvacha de mele? Is that extraneous to the animal? Or is that part of the animal? Anyway, that's one version. You can have another version is Amar Rav Rav said, "Nasik aimeloi likish thing." Not from now. When it will be stolen, the teacher man, you're happy to pay me then. Samuch legnevasik nuyvach. Right before the the gneva, it becomes yours. All the pasuk of the then have a problem here. Then this comes to the end of Brera. That you know that it turns out to be it was always you know it was yours. This is mamish like it's not like tonight. This is like Breira. An event later on will will verify what happened in a minute before. Anyway, my benai, what's a chilek which pshat? Whether it takes place retrospective from the beginning or it happens from the, a moment before it was stolen. We already said that Giza Sevel is say he don't get anyway. What's the difference? Ike benai kushir the rabzeder. The chilek is the question of rabzeder or inami the kaima ba'agam. The, the, the difference is the question of Rab Zayda, which is why not? Give, and then you have to give up our tenets, and then you have a question about my posture. Or what happens to Kaima Bagan right before it was stolen? In fact, that's where it was stolen from, it was in the middle of nowhere. 
So if the vote is, it becomes his at that moment, has become his. No chutz or nothing. How is he coined? If the vote is retrospective, or when I made a mishikha, I took the animal, I 